Many months ago, I uploaded the legend of Fosfru, and Fosfru is a player who is extremely creative. He started the Fast Castle Bohemian Wagon Rush, which eventually led to a nerf and the devs changing the wagon entirely. He then moved on to the Malians and uh, unique units in siege towers and hopping out of the tower and hopping into the tower nonstop. And then more recently, he started to play with the Turks and hop into Rams with Janissaries in Castle Age. And that Janissary and Ram strategy is working at a very high level where you had to manually task the units into each individual ram. But my friends, the devs thought it would be a great idea to implement a new feature, which simplifies such a task and means instead of manually clicking units to multiple rams, you could just simply click one and they will spread out for you perfectly. And Phosphoru saw this and already, literally the day of the patch I'm recording a game where Phosphoru broke the game. He, he broke Age of Empires 2. This is going to have to be fixed, okay? Whatever you're seeing here, doesn't matter how much you like it, it's going to be fixed. Because if it doesn't get fixed, well, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. It's still Dark Age, but trust me, every game is going to become this and people really want to win. But again, I'm getting a little excited here. So I hope you're doing well, YouTube. Uh, did just want to say, uh, still kind of in relax mode. Um, now it's a bit weird of getting back to a video every day, so it's not necessarily... You know, like, I've, I've stepped away fully, but, you know, I haven't been streaming as much. And a lot of you guys might watch me live, but I know a lot of you guys watch the videos. And uh, regardless of how much I come back to streaming, I am going to get back to having some YouTube-only cast mixed into my week. Sitting down and casting when I'm not live is a completely different experience. And there's a lot of games where we can deep dive on strats. And I'll be doing a whole lot of that. So if you appreciate that, leave a like for me. Let me know that all that effort's uh, appreciated. Uh, small apologies here for every uh, tree looking like a pine tree, even though it's supposed to be rainforest. Uh, I have my mods on that I use for playing, and I'm simply too lazy to leave now. So we're off to a great start. But um, Phosphor here is in the red, okay? And Phosphor is playing as the Turks. Now, the intro spoiled exactly what Phosphor is going to try and do. He wants to play Fast Castle. So anytime you're seeing Phosphor, you're thinking, how on earth can you stop this guy? because you kind of know what he's going to do. Now, um, his opponent I don't know too much about. His opponent is ranked uh, around 2k1, though. His name is Maximus. And recently, I've been running into players I, I don't know, which at a, at a like top a couple hundred level, that's really rare for Age of Empires 2. So I don't know if Maximus is known as, as someone else. I haven't really done my research here, clearly. But we got both these players around 2100 ELO, so it's top couple hundred in the world. The map is Golden Swamp. So we know that Red Phosphoru or Phosphoru is going to be going for Fast Castle and Janissaries. That's the goal. Uh, but there's lots of gold towards the middle. So in a normal game, what players would probably try and do is they'd probably try and control the middle long term. And Turks mine gold faster, blah, 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 blah. But again, this is this is like Tur we're not going to talk about standard Turk late game because Phosphoru is going to try and use this new mechanic. Goths are an interesting sieve here. So Goths, their hunt lasts longer, which is really nice with these rhinos, for example. Uh, it doesn't apply to the buffalo. And also you get loom instantly. And I think Maximus knows Phosphor's reputation. I think the villager came forward here in order to try and lame the opponent sometimes. Oh, man. Ooh. Did you see the moonwalk? Best moment of my day. Uh, anyways, I think he was looking for the enemy. Saw the stone, maybe. It was like, ooh, my opponent could be there. But actually... This would be the stone for Phosphoru. Yeah, it's it's pretty common to sometimes use a forward villager and shoot down the opponent's hunt with the Goths because of the free loom. Or not free loom, instant loom. So Maximus isn't going to have that, but Maximus is going to go for a dock to add fishing ships. Now, uh, the, the goal for Maximus is going to be to put as much pressure as possible on Phosphoru to delay the inevitable. I think there are situations where if you know what Phosphoru is going to do, you could go for Fast Castle. Um, but I think that he is not going... Look, he's trying to steal stuff now. Look, look at this guy. He's trying to do everything he can to slow him down. And, ooh, actually, Maximus, I think, gave the water buffaloes back. Salute to you, Maximus. Guess what? I would absolutely not give Phosphor his, his water buffaloes back. The last time I played Phosphor, I went forward with two vills with Mongols. I walled in my vills. I killed his boars. You might say, T90, that's not honorable. You know what's not honorable? Fast Castle, Janissaries, YOLO with Rams at my base. That That is not honorable, Phosphoru. 
The gloves are off when you're playing a player like Phosphor. You gotta get any advantage you can. I actually... As much as I don't like to get my things stolen, I actually wish... And give me your thoughts on this in the comments. I actually wish it was a little bit more commonplace at a high level to steal resources again. Back in the day, everybody used to do it. These days, at a high level, players are like, well, we don't want to gain any unfair advantages. But I think it's part of the game, personally. Anyway, it's not too big a deal. So Phosphor might expect some pressure, but he doesn't know exactly what the pressure is going to be. And notice how he's not fishing here. So most players would fish. He's not doing so. And this is pretty common for him. He will get his scout back to his base when he knows his opponent might be in feudal. It's pretty uncommon for him to scout his opponent. Now, I feel like in some ways, I have helped craft some of these strategies. Now, I obviously cannot take credit for Phosphor. He's, he is his own man. But, uh, you know, we talk on a weekly basis. And I remember initially with the Bohemian strategy, how I talked about maybe he needed to squeeze in Loom. And then a, a week or two later, after the upload, he pointed out, he's like, hey, actually, I figured out a way to get Loom just in case I get attacked and lose fills. Because players are getting really good at uh, applying pressure these days. Especially because they know at this point, like, it's not new. Everyone knows. You got to kill this guy quickly. All right. So, the scout from Maximus is going to go down to the TC. That's not great for him. He also missed these water buffalo, so really unfortunate for him. So he's down 300 food because of that. And now Phosphoru can scout his opponent's base to see what's going on. Now he doesn't see the dock because the dock was built down here by that random villager. That's kind of nice for Maximus. And he also doesn't see the militia here. So, you know, Maximus is about to reach Feudal Age. And the idea is to apply as much pressure as possible. Unfortunately, doesn't have the scout, so couldn't see that there were walls, for example, but is going to build a tower. It's coming in with the two militia. And there's the man-in-arm upgrade. Now, it's going to be three militia now. And this pressure is going to take Phosphoru off of stone. Uh, if there's some one thing you can learn about Phosphoru. Obviously, you're going to learn how insane this change has made things. Oh, my God. Phosphoru killed the water buffalo underneath the town center. Like I said, ruthless. I would lame the crap out of him if I had the opportunity. You got to do it. It's a sign of respect. Anyways... Phosphor being sneaky will even find these buffalo, and the pressure's on. He pulled two vills next to the berries away towards the TC. And he's just going to casually build a blacksmith behind here. And this is now three men-at-arms, but it's more like 2.01 men-at-arms. That guy's one hit away from going down. The Phosphor stops creating villagers at this point. In a normal high-level Age of Empires 2 game, you continue to produce vills. The idea is, the more villagers you have, the better your economy is, the better your economy, the more military you can make. And this is like, this is kind of rough right now to see all these vills running around. This is, again, not something you would see. The idle TC time, the villagers chasing, not a common play. But he wants to get rid of these things. And for the most part, these are now not going to be a problem. And honestly, I think Phosphor wanted to come over to gold anyways. So it was kind of like... Kind of all worked out for him. Now, he will need to sell some resources to click up to Castle Age. 800, 200s, what you need. House wall attempt here from Phosphor doesn't pan out, but the TC has done so many good things for him as more men at arms come in. Okay, so the start for Maximus, not really the start he would have wanted. He would have wanted to have killed something at this point. Uh, we see the food sold. We see more food sold. And there goes Phosphor on the way to the next age. And yet again, another man at arm goes into the TC. Okay, so Phosphor is going to build that castle. And he, he definitely, he thought about this, and he realized that he only needs to buy the next 100 stone. He doesn't even need to mine it. Now, I watched this game before bringing this to you guys. And it's funny, because I was watching these men-at-arms, and I was like, man, Blue's doing a good job of being annoying. Because if you can't kill your opponent, sometimes you, you catch them off guard while they're doing other things, and you're like, in, out, in, out, in, out. You can see he's trying this. The thing is, though... Phosphor, he isn't doing anything else. <laughs> you can't... You can't try and distract a guy who is not looking anywhere else. Like, Maximus has to add farms, and, you know, he might meet, need... He added another dock here to add more fishing ships, and he's, like, doing all this standard stuff there. with the fishing ships? At home, he might, you know, start to wall up. He might build a mill here. Phosphor is just like... Err. It really simplifies his game. And he's going to build a castle. Now, res collected. 
there's almost a thousand more resources right now for Maximus because Maximus has continued to create vills. So this, the idea here is you need to get some pressure in here for Phosphor, and there goes a villager to the middle of the map. He has a plan. Now I want to talk about the change again, okay? I'm going to bring the change back up on screen. We had it at the beginning. Now we, we are a little bit a little bit away from this, but Phosphor, um, he now is able to essentially select a group of units and then click them to multiple rams and the units evenly distribute. Okay, now that we're, we're going to have some discussions. I'm obviously going to share my opinions here. That is only part of the reason why what we're about to see here is very strong. It is kind of a, a interesting topic to discuss, but the goal here for Phosphoru is rams and it is Janissaries, which we saw from him in previous videos. Okay. So th this is one of the best unique units in the game. It does cost food, right? It costs food, which is tough when you have this type of eco. He's still taking Buffalo though, which is really helpful. But not only does it cost food, it's not very mobile. Behind this, Maximus is thinking, okay, I'm the Goths. I'm on the way to Castle Age. I'm the Goths. If I can just survive here, I will be in a good spot. And he's making a demo wrap. Now, he's thinking it's going to be Janissaries. So he's making a tower here. He's waiting for the Janissaries to show up so we can demo them. You can't stonewall with the Goths. I would suggest stonewalling against this pressure. But the thing is, it just takes time to build up. By the way, Phosphor did produce a couple villagers. Which I, which I thought was pretty nice. They, you know, added a couple farms. Okay, so first Janissaries here. And he completely whiffed on the shot. <laughs> and now the demo comes up and then BAM! Big shot here for Maximus. And now we are going to see the Janissary come forward. And potentially hop inside that ram. Now, this is all fine. Like, even if you lose the fishing ships, I think it's fine if you're blue. Because you've been fishing this whole time. Your opponent hasn't. It is currently 36 villagers against 26. Good micro there from blue. Doc is starting to go down, and Blue's probably like, oh, you're going for my Doc? Who cares? Gives him an opportunity, makes another demo. Bam! The Janissary hopped into the Ram right at the perfect moment, which is pretty freaking sick. This player is something else, man. And yeah, she is not long for this world. Uh, she is also not long for this world. And finally, Blue hits the next stage. And so it is Rams and Janissaries. Now, you don't really have the eco to make skirmishers. Skirmishers could be decent against this. The, the problem with, with this attack here is really the timing. We're at the 20 minute mark on an open map. And these units are out in full force here. And Garrison was a little late there for Phosphoru, but he does not lose much there anyways. And here come the Rams and he sees his opponent is building a castle. Now, we're starting to see it, okay? I want to point this out to you. So basically... Phosphoru, instead of grabbing one, clicking Garrison here, grabbing one, clicking Garrison here, grabbing one, clicking Garrison here, he's just select Garrison, and he just clicks them in, and they, they spread out evenly, right? Do so you see that motion right there? That was the change that the devs made with this patch. Um, I think this comes out the day after the patch, but yeah. And Phosphoru is no stranger to people building castles. But now he's, you know, he's going to see that and think better of it for the time being. So, like, Blue he could make Huskarls, which are a great raiding unit. He can try and raid, but Phosphor is always defended with the castle. Try and get extra damage. Basically, it's like any... If you can find one good engagement, you win the game against a guy like this. Because it's so difficult for the opponent to make more rams. Now, okay. I gotta pause. Actually, let's screw it. We're not gonna pause. You see how he, he clicks ungarrison and they all hop out immediately? It's like, bam, bam, bam. And then... Now, he was doing this before, he was doing it manually, and it, it was with one RAM, right? Now, you're just pressing a couple keys, and you're in and out, in and out, in and out, and the Janissaries fire instantly. So the idea is, the RAMs are your protection, as they also destroy buildings. This is a very unnatural situation. Players are not normally going for RAMs like this. I think so comfortable next to the, you know, everything that, that's here at the moment. So there, boom. Sees, sees some Huskarls, boom. Hops out, boom. This is this is one of the test games for him. This literally happened like a couple hours after the patch. Naturally, he's going to get used to it. Blue does come over here, though, and find this ram. And the Janissaries continue to hop out. Now, I actually, 
My take right now, and we'll talk more about it later, I actually think the change the devs made to make garrisoning and rams easier is actually is actually very nice because it is a really annoying thing. So, you know, I've had some takes over the years where I'm like, what are the devs thinking? I, I think if they can make it so the units don't instantly fire, it probably, like, if there's a reload period, um, then that would be, that would probably be a good compromise here, but... Guys, we haven't even gotten to the crazy stuff yet. Look at this man go. Phosphoru going in, loses the Vils. And this is looking pretty rough. Gonna lose the Ram, but watch this. Into the Ram, out of the Ram, out of the Ram, into the Ram. Not really sure how I can say this more creatively, but guys, Blue's on two TCs, producing Vils. Blue has Huskarls. Blue added Siege behind the cast. Like, Blue has collected 3,000 more resources. This game, in a normal world, maybe with any other player, is over. Because you can't push the castle. You, you just cannot get in the castle, it feels like. Now, Huskarls cannot get anywhere near those Genistries for the time being. Phosphoru realizes maybe the timing has passed him. And he has fallen back. Again, just 24, 24 villagers now for Phosphoru. He just lost two villagers. He looks back at his economy for the first time in forever. Drops a new lumber camp for efficiency. Has another ram in queue, but currently needs a house. And Blue is like, where is he? Now, I played against Phosphoru a couple times. Uh, and obviously watched dozens of his games. And there is always this period where he's going for the next wave. And... It, it, it's long enough where you think that he might be focusing on his economy like a normal player, but he never is. And down goes that villager. So that was a little wasteful there from Phosphoru. And here we go. This is where it really starts to get crazy. It, you could tell Phosphoru out of old habits was in and out of individual rams before. Watch this crap. <laughs> this doesn't feel like... This doesn't feel like the same game. Look how fast he's able to get back inside the rams. And it's multiple. Normally, you could only hide six in a ram, but now you could you could essentially have 30 Genisteries, and they instantly go back to safety. <laughs> I mean, Phosphor has to kill quickly here. I apologize for my laughter. This is a very serious game. And we've got Huskarls. We've got some Siege. Again, the idea is the Siege takes out the rams. So here we go. Now he focuses, focuses down the units after he hops out of the ramps, and there goes the siege, and now they're back inside the ramps. This is insane. And down goes the siege. Now Blue's like, okay, I guess I gotta engage against this, because I'm starting to lose my base. And the Janissaries are in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Another siege weapon pops out. Janissaries, though, continue to hop in and out of the ramps. And yeah, this is absolutely insane. <laughs> um... Maximus is like, huh? <laughs> okay. Well, it's it, it's a crazy situation, guys, because the Vil counts are insane. Now, again, you gotta kill this army. A lot of these rams are weak, but Manganel goes down. Now, this Siege Workshop has got another Manganel on the way. Will it even be created at this point with all the rams around? And will it do enough damage? Boom! Goes down instantly. We maybe had a second, but he would have had to click right away. Here comes Phosphor again. Now, Blue is, like, no army for this. He's queuing up Huskarls. His castle, though, will help. So the castle could, if he focuses down the weak rams, could be really nice. Because if you focus down a ram, then the Genistries don't have anywhere to be. And you can lose a town center when your opponent isn't creating out of theirs. So now only three rams here for Phosphor. And the TC fire, the castle fire, everything's doing a pretty nice job. And Phosphor's got to back away. Resources collected right now, 15,000 resources collected for Phosphor. Or, sorry, for Maximus. 11,000 for Phosphor. But if you look at... um, Oh, shoot. I don't actually have resources destroyed on here. We're going to update that soon. We had it during Hidden Cup. But resources destroyed has got to be insane. Because he's taken out Siege. And Siege is not cheap. He's taken out, you know, the TC, the Monastery. And also the Huskarls. Hasn't really killed that many villagers. So here comes Phosphor again. Choo choo. Just gonna roll right in. Says, oh, Siege. Okay, that's really cool. Later. Tries anyways. Nice shot from Maximus. Maximus is on to him. The Phosphor <laughs> continues to roll in. And he's looking for damage. Again, his eco might be untouched, but it's not really doing that much. And Blue's now thinking, okay, I got a counterattack. Like, if I could hit his eco, he's only here. Maybe I could survive. 
Lou lost the Siege Workshop before. Lou trying to save this one. And Blue is, is doing a much better job now. You can tell he's learned throughout this game that he needs to hit and then back away instantly. Now, there's some tiny little micro moves he could do. Like, in those instances, he could try and task the TC to the ram. But the TC will always attack the closest thing, which is usually the ram. Phosphor is like, counterattack and hit my eco. What eco here? It's actually a pretty big deal. He doesn't have many villagers, but he reacts. So he garrisons inside the TC. Meanwhile, still has the rams here. And Manganel is going to end up going down, but a ram did go down. The problem is the castle was placed perfectly, so it protects the wood, it protects the gold, and then there's the TC. So now Blue's like, okay, I can't really hit anything. But, but, Blue does take out a lot of these ramps. <laughs> there is another wave coming, <laughs> which is, <laughs> which is going to be a problem. And these two rams have just rolled in and, you know, into the ram, out of the ram. Into the ram, out of the ram. It's just instant. With what before was the more difficult of the task. Eerie's got more rams. Blue's got to be like, be thinking, are you kidding me right now? But he does find some. And rams aren't cheap. You can tell right now Phosphor got a little distracted. He's not used to the multi-groups of rams. But he's trying to group up his units together here. Does this still feel like Age of Empires 2 to you guys? Does it feel like a completely different game? It feels like a completely different situation to me. Anyways... This is just, this is just Phosphor with this new garrison function. Now again, uh, how much of it is the garrison function and how much of it is the player? I think a lot of it's the player, but um, with units that, that have range and instantly fire, I think it could, it might get a little bit obnoxious. I'll be curious to see, I mean, the devs don't always implement things that... I see eye to eye with, which is good because I've I've also been wrong in instances. They've add something and I'll be like, oh shoot. I I would have just been negative Nancy about that one. I would never appreciated it. So that that's definitely been the case in some some situations. I don't want full control over decisions. I want to give some input here or there and it is what it is. But what is that? The third or fourth siege workshop going down and phosphor in and out of the rams all the time. So, you know, but but this is an unimportant area for Blue compared to this area. Now he's been back on some gold and some stone. So, okay. Out of the rams, into the rams. Out of the rams, into the rams. Out of the rams, and guess what? Into the rams. Non-stop here from Phosphoru. The hopping in and out's really nice because the TC doesn't really have a chance to hit anything. And the Huskarls are all melting. Unfortunately for Blue, Huskarls... They're not great against infantry. Petard! Oh my god! Petard! That was sick! Uh, sorry, Huskarls, um, well, they're not the best against infantry, but they're they're not great against gunpowder, is what I meant to say. I think he's done the right thing. Like, I think Siege against Thrims, like, he's still waiting and still thinking. I don't know where this villager's going, but it, the thinking here is probably as long as I don't give up because he's not producing villagers as long as I defend my eco, I'm okay. Blue has done an amazing job. If I was live streaming this, we would be saluting Blue right now. Because he's still not dead. 64 villagers against 25. And Phosphorus got 20 Janissaries. He's got to group him up. He's got to go for a big push. Again, I don't know where that random villager... Or what, what the purpose of that random villager is. But I like how Blue, like, Blue keeps trying to go different angles. He's like, okay, you push me in one angle, I'm going to go to another. Really showing some fight. I think micro the fishing ships away. Probably not worth adding a dock at this point because there's only two fish left. I think the dock went down. Okay, so now Blue, he knows that Phosphor is not going to hesitate against a castle. Again, it's a freaking castle, guys. A castle. <laughs> two castles. <laughs> Huskarl's pretty good against Rams. There's Manganels around. <laughs> and this is... So for all the excitement I came with, in with at the start of this video, this is really the moment that had me laughing my ass off. It, this, this is where this new change with the auto garrison really gets to be seen in full effect. 20 Janissaries and 5 Rams. And here we go. Now the, the wall helps buy a little bit of time. The rams are currently clumped up. Oh no, there's siege. Oh no, the siege hit every single ram. 
That's really bad for Fosru. But he hops out. He takes out the Mangonel. And whoop! Right back into all the Rams. Does lose a couple units. Whoop! Right back into all the Rams. Whoop! Right back into all the Rams. Kind of getting my timing with the whoop and right back in the Rams off a little bit. Whoop! There we go again. And you see, you see the issue here. You see the issue. They fire instantly. This has made Fosfaru, who already needed a nerf. Whoop! It's made him so freaking strong. And Blue is here building castle number three. Castle number three. He's had like a hundred villagers this game. His opponent's never been over 30. And the Rams and the Janissaries are just taking out everything. And Blue still think, I've got a Villy. If I can hold. These Rams are almost dead. If the Rams go down, then the Janissaries will go down. Panic time. One of the Rams goes down. Now, a couple of Janissaries had died. Now, they evenly distribute with the Rams that are there, right? He never had the Rams fully maxed out, which might be next level thinking. Out of the Ram. Into the Ram. Out of the Ram. Into the Ram. More Rams on the way. Out of the Ram. Into the Ram. He continues to do it. And it's just one click. You have your units on a control group. You click the rams to the castle and you just click them on one ram and it's just perfect. And then you just eject, click, eject, click, which we got to give the man some credit. This is wild. <laughs> this is also completely broken. This is a castle in castle age, people. <laughs> My man's had three of them here. This is obnoxious. This is completely obnoxious from Phosphoru. And Blue just cannot believe it. Now the micro has been... Really nice from Phosphor as well. He clicks one of the rams towards this. Because he knows his opponent is desperate. That's really smart. Blue's going to have to do something about this. Blue does take out the ram. He's running out of stone. Phosphor is, is falling back. And Phosphor still behind by all those villagers. And is losing the rams, like we said. Manganel goes down, though. Two of these rams are weak. Phosphor only has 12 Denisseries. This is a very close game. The into the ram and out of the ram spam continues here from Phosphoru. Loses another ram, but immediately back inside some new ones. Getting more kills. Blue holds on like a freaking champ. And what is left is five Janissaries and one ram from Phosphoru. And finally, Maximus can breathe because he's done it. He is held from the attack. Surely Phosphoru doesn't have more. Well, no, he, he, he's making more. Yeah, he, he's making more. Uh, he left one inside this TC a long time ago and forgot about it. So if he realizes that, that'll be good. Yeah, he's making more. And the vill count that Blue had, that big villager lead, well, it's now 34 villagers against 27. And there's also a big issue with lack of stone now. Uh, there's a little bit of stone here, I guess. There's these two villagers on stone still from here. So that's nice. But you still need a way to kill this. You still need a way to stop it. And Phosphoru has been there. He has done that. In my opinion, you, you can see how he's learned how to take advantage of this new change even throughout the game. Again, this is on the afternoon that the patch came in, like a couple hours later. And, well, it's going to be four rams again. It didn't take that long. And we are seeing rounds, I don't know, 11 at this point. I think Phosphor is out of gold now, so he's going to head to the middle maybe to look for some gold. Now, we've got two castles. Blue's finally going to research Fletching. I think if there's one thing Blue could have done earlier, that could be it. The castles are his greatest weapon. The castles have 20 kills. I would have liked to have seen that. Uh, maybe Murder Holes as well. I think Murder Holes could have maybe paid off. Again, a lot of pro players don't research that. The thinking is, if I can't stop the military at the base of my castle with army... Murder Holes isn't going to save me. That's why people don't do it. And more often than not, that is the case, by the way. Oh, man. Blue. I, I feel like we've seen it all before. Siege Workshop's going to go down. <laughs> Losing a market would actually hurt because he's been buying and selling resources nonstop because his eco's been all out of whack. <laughs> and Maximus is walling up his castles. He's dropping Siege Workshop number 12. Phosphor has changed his strategy and basically said, you can hide in your castles, but you're not collecting resources if you're there, so I'm going to take everything else. <laughs> <sighs> Meanwhile, massing more rams, adding more Janissaries, just for the next wave. 
This is crazy, man. <laughs> and like, listen, I hold some level of responsibility when it comes to showing people stuff like this because I, I think there's a lot of people out there who are going to be scared to play ranked because the people are going to try this because there's also a fair amount of you who are going to try this yourself. It's not just exclusive to Janissaries. I think Janissaries may be the best example of it. But, um, it, you know, it's just incredibly strong how one click gets all of your units immediately into the rams like that. And then one click has them pop out and insta-fire. And think of the difference between, you know, the amount of time in between the castle shots, right? You have a lot of time to hop out and hop back in. But full credit to Phosphor for this one, because this man, I, I know that this patch has made him stronger. And we'll have discussions on that. But he was doing this ram strategy. He, he was doing what we are seeing here before the patch. It's just that he had to work so much harder. He never could get into this many rams as quickly as he is. I did ask Phosphor about it. And I said, on a scale of 1 to 10... How hard was it for you to implement this before? And how hard is this for to, to do this now? And as Blue gets destroyed here, Phosphoro said, well, it was, you know, a 10 before. He said it was impossible for me to do this amount of numbers before. Yeah, I would lose enough units where it wouldn't pay off. And the strategy is really only possible because of the patch. He said, now this is, this is a one. Like, this is super easy for me. He says, I don't even have control groups. It's just like... I'm just sitting here clicking. Easiest game of my life. He didn't add that part, but... Poor Blue. I mean, this has not been the easiest game for Phosphor. Uh, uh, poor Maximus. Almost feel bad for showing this to people, but... The reason this is an epic game is not just because of Red Phosphor here. It is also because of Maximus. And Maximus is just... He just doesn't want to accept it. It's not a fun strat to lose to. Again, Blue is shown to be a fighter. This is obnoxious. He's probably the whole time he's like, oh, these freaking devs, are they, oh, they're so out of their element, man. Do they even know what they're doing? What, why would they ever do this? Have they not seen the phosphor strategy? What, what is this? I mean, what is this? This is, this is Age of Empires. This isn't the game that I know. <laughs> GG. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a game. So yeah, um, that, that's a thing. And uh, this this was just within hours of this new patch being implemented. Now, if you have, say, a group of halbs, right? Um, and you want to garrison in siege rams in the Imperial Age. This makes it much easier. This is what the devs wanted. So I don't want to sit here and say, uh, how could they have not known? Why this? Why that? But here's the deal. The fact that units insta-fire like this is a problem. Right? It's a big problem. And if there's if there's tournaments with money on the line, people are going to be abusing the crap out of this. <laughs> Not just with Janissaries, but like in late game. Like, it's fairly easy, and it seems incredibly strong. Um, I What I would like is to not just revert it back to what it was. If it's possible for them to make sure that ranged units still have to reload while within the ram, then it'd be very different. Because I think the biggest problem here is is not just the Janissaries in the Rams, not how quick they even hop at, go into the Rams or get out of the Rams. That's obviously is still strong, but it's just the, the insta fire. So you're just able to, if if anything, fire faster, hopping in and out of Rams uh, than even standing there still, if you're able to get the timing right. So, um, but you know, like this is this is kind of. You know, the crazy thing of having a game like Age of Empires 2 um, be be updated. Like, I didn't think years back that we would have a dev team. I didn't think we'd have a definitive edition. I didn't think we'd have Capture Age. And I could zoom out and be like, oh, look at that. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that we have because of these patches and because of where this game is at right now. And uh, I, I thought it was pretty freaking cool. <laughs> it is pretty freaking cool. It is definitely going to have to lead to some type of changes. I, I'm guessing because I think every mid to low rank player is going to be, you know, facing up against this strategy. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. This is the first game that I've seen after the new change where this is implemented by Phosphor. And Phosphor has a habit, as we've seen in other videos, of making strategies look incredibly strong when someone like myself or normal players cannot implement them. So 
We give Phosphor a lot of credit, but this is the, the day that Phosphor broke the game, or the game buffed Phosphor. I don't, I don't really know which. Uh, there's the KD, 2-1 to one KD for Phosphor. You gotta love it. Again, he did say to me, he said, this is completely broken. Um, it, it's a problem. He said it is so easy. So if anything, they did a really good job. They did a really good job making it easy, which is what they wanted. They wanted units to garrison and rams quickly. But implementing this live is going to lead to some potential for, for this being abused. But that, that's how competitive Age of Empires goes. If there's an advantage players can get, they're going to get it. And uh, eventually, hopefully that will be looked at. But, uh, you know, if it does get looked at, if it does get changed, remember this. Because that was just insane. I've had thousands of videos over the past decade. I don't think I've seen anything quite like that. So I'll keep you updated, of course, on what Phosphor is up to. We also have some cool uploads this week with some sudden death stuff. Uh, there's a tournament right now going on with sudden death. Multiple, actually. So keep an eye on the channel, guys. I'll bring new and exciting games to you every day. Nice job from Maximus yet again, honestly. Um, really impressed with how he played this one. I, I actually, I think the problem is Phosphor doesn't give you time, right? But my instincts are, it blue had a little bit more time, had an extra mangonel here or there, maybe had fletching. Like there, there was, he needed one more thing. I'm not sure exactly what it was. A slightly better engagement at one point. My instinct is that he would eventually maybe be able to to fortify up and win this one. But then again, I don't know how you're supposed to kill that. And there's no easy way to counterattack Phosphor when his eco looks like this. Nice farms, by the way, Phosphor. Very, very impressive. Uh, GG, guys. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow with another video.